Reshoots are a necessary part of filmmaking. While they've gotten a huge amount of flack over the past few years and have become synonymous with botched productions, they're not always terrible. Hell, sometimes they even turn a good movie into a great one. However, while there's often good reasons behind reshoots, sometimes they happen for reasons that nobody could have anticipated before production started. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 9 movie reshoots that happened for ridiculous reasons. Number 9. Dark Phoenix takes so long to edit, another film steals its end. Dark Phoenix was a famously troubled production and a disappointing end to Fox's mainline superhero property. One weird complication in a series of weird complications though was that the entire ending had to be reshot because another superhero movie had pretty much an entirely identical third act. Now I do want to stress that both movies were in production at the same time and of course didn't actually copy the other's homework but the similarities apparently between Dark Phoenix's originally space set finale and that of Captain Marvel would have drawn attention to Fox's movie quite negatively. Though the movie in question was never actually confirmed to be Captain Marvel, all signs point towards that, and star James McAvoy even came out and said to Yahoo, quote, the finale had to be changed. There was a lot of overlap and parallels with another superhero movie that came out a while ago, end quote. In the end, then, the cosmic source material of Dark Phoenix was swapped out for something grounded on Earth, and this new finale didn't really make the sequel feel particularly all that spectacular. Number 8, a faulty lighter restarts a whole sequence in 1917. Okay, so this one isn't necessarily like the rest on this list. 1917 was of course filmed and edited to give the illusion that everything was captured in one continuous take. And while of course the film itself isn't actually just one big take from beginning to end, the film did still impressively shoot extensive sequences at a time, with lengthy takes requiring every part of a set piece to go off without a hitch, so the filmmakers could capture tens of minutes of footage at a time. So, with this in mind, you can imagine just how annoying it would be then to get right to the very end of one of these extensive takes and then have to reshoot everything because of one very silly mistake. Well, that's exactly what happened while filming the part where Lieutenant Leslie, played by Andrew Scott, lights a cigarette. Put simply, the lighter just didn't work, and as such, the entire sequence had to be reshot. Yes, this does technically count as just another the take rather than reshooting the entire thing after the fact, but I'm counting it because it's just so much film that you have to redo, and obviously the directors were trying to get through each one with as minimal retakes as possible. So yeah, a film which executed plane crashes, explosions, and elaborate battles to perfection was apparently just disrupted by a tiny faulty appliance. Number 7, Gross Hands Forces Napoleon Dynamite Reshoots Who would have thought that Napoleon Dynamite, a movie with a tiny budget and practically no plot, would become a modern classic that's still being quoted 16 years after its release. Equally unexpected as that is the fact that the movie's opening credit sequence would result in a silly controversy and have to be entirely redone. Now, you may remember those opening credits as they were written on food and household objects that were moved around by a pair of hands. Well, according to an interview given to artofthetitle.com, the film's director screened the opening credits to studio executives and one of the bigwigs complained about how quote-unquote gross the hands on screen looked. Furthermore, they insisted that the credits be entirely reshot with better looking hands. So the director waited several weeks for the studio to fly out a professional hand model over for the reshoots in question. Number 6, test audiences hate dogs bleeding in a fish called Wanda. One of the funniest parts of this 1988 comedy classic is when the nervous criminal Ken attempts to murder an elderly woman and then accidentally kills each of her pet dogs in the process. Now, I know that sounds pretty traumatic when I just say it without context, but trust me, it works better in the film. Anyway, no dogs were thankfully harmed while filming those scenes in real life, and in fact, each doggy death is purposefully made to look as comedic and as fake as possible. However, as reported by the Story Grid writers room, test audiences were so repelled by the sight of blood dripping from the corpse of one of the dogs that the scene was reshot without any blood. Now, it's normal for comedies to reshoot entire scenes if test audiences don't find them funny. That is, of course, par for the course. But refilming a scene because test audiences couldn't bear to see a fake dog bleed fake blood? That is just maybe a little bit absurd. Number 5. Who Shot First? Casablanca It's ridiculous just how tightly films were regulated and censored in the the mid 20th century, especially when the Hayes Code was in effect. Now, this was all pre-MPAA, 
and the Hayes Code essentially was a system that heavily censored Hollywood movies from the 1930s to the 1960s and wouldn't allow anything quote unquote unwholesome or quote unquote immoral to appear on the big screen. And as you can probably imagine, the definitions of what those things even were in the first place were, well, they were very flexible. Now, if all of that doesn't sound ridiculous enough by itself, the change they forced Casablanca in particular to make was a special brand of idiotic. As chronicled in the book Hollywood Censored, Joseph Breen and the Production Code Administration, the code wouldn't allow Humphrey Bogart's Rick to shoot the Nazi character Major Heinrich Strasser without provocation. Apparently, even shooting a Nazi in cold blood was too immoral for 1942 audiences to handle. However, the filmmakers initially risked shooting the scene without having it signed off on first, and thus the entire thing had to be entirely reshot so that Strasser actually pulled out his gun before Rick shot him. So yeah, this preceded the whole Who Shot First Star Wars saga by like several decades. Number four, Marilyn Monroe's famous The Seven Year Itch moment was hardly a breeze. Marilyn Monroe standing on a subway grate that's blowing up her dress is one of the most famous scenes in movie history. It's a scene you've seen even if you don't like movies. It's been recreated, reshown, and parodied more times than almost anything else in this industry. However, you might be surprised to know that the filming of this scene was absolutely not a breeze. According to a New York Times article, it was initially filmed on a real street in New York, which attracted a a large crowd of onlookers, which the studio was apparently hoping to use to drum up publicity. However, hundreds of them were men who responded to the sight of Marilyn's billowing dress by catcalling and shouting things from the sidelines. Their juvenile noise ruined every single take, and the crew were forced to reshoot the entire scene on a Hollywood set a few days later. Number three, Harry Potter isn't 75. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. After eight movies, the Harry Potter film series bowed out with an epilogue scene that showed our young heroes as mature parents with young kids of their own, ushering them off to Hogwarts just as they were a few decades prior. And just like that, every single person who grew up with these movies realized just how old they'd actually become. But apparently the epilogue also required a reshoot due to the crew going ridiculously overboard with the old people makeup. The original version of the scene had Daniel Radcliffe for instance, in a grey wig. Apparently they thought future Harry was aged 75 instead of 37. And Rupert Grint told MTV that the heavy prosthetics he was under and fake belly they gave him initially made him look like a quote unquote monster Donald Trump. Upon viewing, everybody agreed that the scene just looked pretty awful, and they came to the decision that only a few minor makeup effects and digital tweaks on each character would be enough to age them up appropriately. And hey, they were kind of right. Number two, Tobey Maguire is replaced from Life of Pi for being too famous. Though you may not have thought about it even one time since, Life of Pi was all anybody could talk about as it swooped the Oscars following its release in 2012. Now, there are many interesting behind the scenes stories that emerged during the making of this film, including a tiger nearly drowning, but none so baffling as the decision to fire Tobey Maguire and refilm all of his already completed scenes. The thing is, there was no scandal or anything like that to motivate this change in in fact, there wasn't much of a reason at all. Instead, director Ang Lee decided to reshoot Maguire's scenes because he felt that his fame was too distracting. Lee also said that he wanted the film to have an entirely international cast, and Maguire's replacement was the suitably lesser known but still awesome Rafe Spall. Even with all of this in mind though, the replacement of Maguire is still a little bit bizarre, especially so considering that Lee and Maguire have a history that spans two movies before this. Number one, that infamous rooftop scene, The Room. You simply cannot make a list about cinematic ridiculousness without including this absurd creation from the madcap filmmaker Tommy Wiseau, a man who I have literally spoken to on the phone in real life and is just as larger than life as you would expect. But that's my humble brag out the way, let's get on to the actual reasons why he's here. Well, the memorable rooftop scene in which young Denny is threatened by a drug dealer named Chris R was originally filmed in an alleyway. As chronicled in the Disaster Artist book, Wiseau insisted that they shoot it again on a rooftop because because he felt it would be quote unquote more dramatic, bearing in mind that this scene had no relevance whatsoever on the overall plot. Even though refilming the scene would cost over $80,000 and require all of the actors to be brought back with zero notice, Wiseau wasn't deterred and managed to fulfill his creative vision. And to be fair, even if it didn't succeed at first, the room went on to become such a massive cult classic that those rooftop scenes became iconic in the process. 